Question of the week. I do it every week. Fuck it. Question Faith. of the week. Ian, you muted yourself. Right. Games you. of the year. Hello. We decided, as we said a few weeks back, to go through the years of Xbox and pick our game of the year for each year. We've done 2002. We've done 2003. We're now in 2004, surprisingly. <gasps> it's crazy how maths works. So, Ian, Hello. tell me about your game of the year for 2004, if you can remember that far back. Or I suppose you're only a baby, aren't you? So. Yeah, exactly. For me, it's still young. Still got but that belt of all our memories. <laughs> two games that will always, forever, be embedded in me in 2004. One, which is probably still, I would say, top 10 of my favourite games of all time. Um, so, special shout out, firstly, to Need for Speed Underground 2. Loved it. Fantastic Loved title. Loved it. Best racing game ever. They just, literally, I don't understand. Whoever make, what's the company that makes Need for Speed? It's not EA. It's, what's the... Uh, the is he, isn't it? Who's it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, isn't there a sub team that make it though, isn't it? Is it not it just like Montreal? Oh, is it? There we go. Is it not something like that? Yeah, got so, me going. I was going to say, Ross, look it up. Ian, Ian, carry on. Yeah, so. Jeeves, ask Jeeves. For me, if they just remade Need for Speed Underground 2, they'll make shitloads of money. They'll, oh. just, they'll be printing money. Modern they... day graphics on Need for Speed Underground 2. Yeah, or and even like, make a or make a third one. Like, even if you want to make a third yeah, one, bring the cars up to date. The thing is, like, uh, this is dragging me down a rabbit hole. As I had a couple of the cars that were in this game, this is dragging me down my old school <laughs> racer days. Mm, um, boy racer, I knew oh, it. I knew there was. It was. I, I had the. I was GDM for life, man. That was that was me. I had stickers. I had everything. Um, yeah, it was EA that done it. But oh, a modern day version of that. Yeah. <sighs> That's dangerous. That's that's just a license to print money. Just imagine the under lights things, the neon lights shining off your screen. I don't do cars at all. So big that's turbos. Exactly. That's what you need. Big turbos and big wings. Ah. Oh. Yeah, I remember having them. My Lancer, Mitch Gucci Lancer. Oh, Evo. Evo. Yeah. Uh, Supra. No, uh, no. Skyline or Evo for me. Can he turn a corner? But good God, good help you in a straight line. <laughs> oh. But yeah, fantastic. I mean, they just need to. I mean, that's just printing money. I don't know why, because everyone still votes on one of the best Need for oh, Speeds. Oh yeah, it's easily <clears throat> not even just so, the best Need for Speeds. One of the best racing games. But now yeah. they've got one with Aaron Paul in it and the feels and emotions, and yeah, that fantastic film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The one that came close to being not too oh, bad. Oh wait a minute, wait a minute. This is controversial. Was the actual Need for Speed the one they just called Need for Speed in 2015? I think it was. What was that? They, they just called it Need for Speed. It was just literally Need for Speed. It was really, it's not quite poor because it was good racing. It was open world, but also they had really shitty like cutscenes, but it was all like actual humans in the cutscene. Um, I don't yeah. remember that one. Well, I'm going to cut in quickly and just read out, especially because Pete is on your guy's wavelength. He oh, said, yeah. bit of a barren year for games was 2004, which I'm not entirely sure I agree with, but we'll carry on. A quick shout out to Rainbow Six Black Arrow, which we'll get back to. And the main prize goes to Need for Speed Underground 2. No Need for Speed game has come, ever come close to replicating it. See, Pete knows. Yeah, Pete he's, knows. He's, he, he, I mean, he's made a bit of a ridiculous <laughs> statement with it being a barren year for gaming. But yeah, I'll, I'll give him that Need for Speed was oh, a work of art. I mean, you, yes. you guys might as well be talking fucking FIFA for all, I, all of the knowledge I have of Need for Speed, but I'm sure it was wonderful. Anything else on Need for Speed, or do you want to go on to your, your runner-up, sir? The soundtrack. Soundtrack was brilliant. The soundtrack was freaking mm. awesome. Raiders on the Storm. So that was my one up Need for Speed. But <laughs> the peak game that year for me, I will give one quick little special side out side quick side quest side quest because I just noticed it came out that year as well. Was Ninja Gaiden? Oh, that was nearly mine. I very nearly <laughs> chose it. I changed my mind. <laughs> I just completely forgot it came out that year. It's like, oh my god, it came out that year. Ninja, Ninja Gaiden. Gaiden was awesome. The original. Oh, oh what a game. Yes. Anyway, Carol. Okay, so that's basically we won't talk about that too much because I'll be waffling off for ages. But just like Pete, for me, Rainbow Six Free Black Arrow. I spent far too many hours on this title. I was fucking brilliant at it. And <laughs> I, just, I just loved playing it because I was fucking good at it. It's one of the games where you, if you play, no one where you play enough, you become good. And that was me. I was just trousing do you mean, my beat. Do you mean multiplayer or the single, like the campaign? Multiplayer. The multiplayer, yeah. Always just for a multiplayer. It was just, just 
So I was always in the multiplayer lobbies. Just you kind of knew everyone would kind of sort of camp and do it. I also had a few friends that they would play all together and we have like fun game modes as well. So obviously, and it's always good fun keeping team killing it as well. So it was hilarious as well. Yeah. So, but yeah, and also flashing your teammates. Well, so flashbangs, special guest Pete will appreciate the, the flashbang mention. <laughs> flashbang your teammates. But yeah, I just, it was such a brilliant game. And I think what they did really well with it was, I think I can't remember one level I didn't like. Each level had its own fun, its own little perk, its own kind of niche way of playing it. I think the only one I could remember, which was really, the only one I could put it that was really annoying one, was there was like, I can't remember what it was called, but it's like, it was like, a, it was like a ship, like a cargo ship. And there's only two ways to get to each level. One was just a long corridor, but obviously you could just snipe there and just wait and just kill them as they come up to you. Or you go above and there's also just loads of corridors and you could just hide in the corridor as soon as they come around, you kill them. But apart from that, I fucking just love that game. I played so many hours on it. I, I feel like I. Nice. I feel like I've missed out on Rainbow Six. Like I said, just looking at like all the Rainbow Six games, obviously that's two weeks in a row that we've had Rainbow Six mentioned. And I'm like, I don't like. I didn't start Rainbow Six till Vegas, and that was 2006. Yeah. I feel like I've missed out. I think my so first much. one was that one, yeah. And it was just, I think I made quite a few good friends there as well. Yeah, right. That's the first time when Xbox kind of live came a bit peak, was yeah. those days. And. Yeah, that's it, if, it was a it was a very quick sequel, wasn't it? Because we had Rainbow Six Three and then Rainbow Six Black Arrow. I think it was the next year. Yeah, well, it, I'm just, it was like an add-on, wasn't it? it was yeah, I'm like just, I was reading none of that. So the game was Rainbow Six Three Raven Shield, mm. and then the Black Arrow part was like a semi sequel to mm. it on Xbox the following year. But it's mainly more of it was to focus on multiplayer and yeah. had loads more multiplayer match, maps. But I think I think when as soon as Blackout came, I think oh, yeah, I just played so much of that. I made quite a few friends online and stuff. That's when I say the Xbox Live kind of came peak then. Kind of yeah, that's kind of getting onto it. I was reading up on um, a Wikipedia, and that's what I said. It was it was basically launched to highlight just how good sorry, Xbox Live was. Mm-hmm. Um, so sort of voice hand communication. With yeah, how your mum was most elusive woman on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> but you yeah. know it was just, just good fun I mean yeah I mean like I say always, always the classic and I think when we were playing all this stuff there was quite a few Brits versus America so it was always been British versus America slightly yeah. racist but yeah. it was always good oh, fun no, that's, that's I, good I, shit I remember them days <laughs> all, I, remember I them all, days, yeah. always jump into a, a sort of Brits v Yanks can't beat yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> it's always yeah. that yeah but yeah such good fun so many good memories so yeah that's what for me is, and then that's probably why. Not only for the top ten, because it was such good fun gameplay, it has such good fond memories of um, playing and just playing with friends, playing online, and just being good at a game. Nice, nice. You you can't beat a game that you're good at, eh? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's nice. like Jay Graham and Bomberman. Yeah, <laughs> I, did, no, I did beat him. I beat him uh, once. So... I beat him once as well. Hey! In, in what thirty years, I've beaten him once. <laughs> I'm going to keep reminding them of that. Graham, yeah, if you're I, listening. I, Graham, if you're listening, I'll beat you as well. We'll beat you. Uh, but however, Bomb Man isn't one of the games we're going to use. Ross, do you want to tell us about the games you've chosen? So I, again, following on the very, I think, conclusive pathway, Need for Speed Underground 2, just yeah, fantastic game. The the game that really... I, I was sort of as fucking entitled as it sounds i was very much a two console guy when it, when the xbox 360 came out so i was jumping onto playstation 2 games primarily and then some heat, uh, xbox games and i think the game that dragged me not even kicking and screaming because it was that fucking good onto xbox wholeheartedly was halo 2 the yes. The nice. storyline playing either as Master Chief or one of my favourite characters in Halo, the Arbiter. Oh, um, spoilers. Hello. Um, He's even the character in Killer Instinct. Fantastic. Exactly. Um, no, just such... Oh, I just love the game. So fucking good. Um, it was on. it was like the biggest thing in the world at the time as well. When oh, it, when it, it came was... out, everybody was so excited for it. I remember I was yeah. fucking... Uh, I think I went to a midnight launch. I was fucking up all night playing it. Couldn't wait playing it online every night for like two years. And the campaign was uh, was so so, but the multiplayer was fucking amazing. The campaign, the campaign was bad. fantastic. Yeah, uh, I, I I enjoyed it, but looking back on it, it was definitely wasn't my favourite one. Oh, no. it was 
fucking incredible. And then obviously you've got everything to do with the flood and oh, it was just Halo Two was a masterpiece. There's no getting away from it. Like obviously Combat Evolved was amazing. Like nobody expected that like that wasn't with good. Halo Two they completely reworked the on multiplayer online. That's yes. what's the end of Xbox Live. And yeah. it was fantastic again. I yeah. Exactly. Thinking hours into that. It was the party system, the free the DLC and Dual Wielding. Dual Wielding, yes. In Dual Wielding. Where's we need more Dual Wielding? Um but no, I oh, absolutely loved Halo 2. And another one that kicked me off on one of my favourite game series of all time, um especially the second one of them, was Fable. Hero, ah. your manner is low. What's that? So obviously Everybody will say Fable Walt 2 was the peak of, fail, he, uh, of Fable. Um, Fable 1, Correctly. probably the next one that was after that. And then Fable 3 is maybe not as well received. Um, I don't know why, because I still think it's a fantastic game. It um, has a bit of a shitty end system, but apart from that, it's brilliant in every other way, shape or form. Um, yeah, introduced to your heroes for the first time. And obviously the backstory, everything that happens in Albion. Um, yeah. Just, again, one of these games where it was this massive RPG type idea with all these different abilities that you could get. Obviously everything that happens with your... <laughs> they, they follow a very similar story of family type idea. So obviously you've got the your parents get murdered and then your sister gets kidnapped in the first one. Second one, you get taken up to the big fancy castle and either your brother slash sister gets spat or kicked out a window. Um, and then the third one, you are... Is it your brother that's the king? Yeah, brother's the king, isn't it? It has to do the bad yeah. shit for the benefit of everybody else, but you don't find that out until later. So yeah, family plays a big part of it there. Um, but no, beautiful... Beautiful looking game for the time it came out. Um, great story. The cast as well that were in it. The voice actors, fantastic. Like list of play. I think Fable's done that throughout their whole games. They've always had amazing voice actors. Like some amazing super... British voice actors as well. Like yeah. it's all been very yeah, very British sense of humour, isn't it? Like it's mm. just it's unbelievable. Some of the people that they've had in the film, in the in the sort of um, the games. Like obviously, John John Cleese was in some of them. Um, I always forget her name, but she was the teacher that taught flying in Harry Potter. She yeah. was um, an iconic Zoe Wan an, I, I, Zoe yeah, Wanamaker, a, yeah. um, an iconic woman in in British TV. I just I can cannot remember her name. <laughs> yeah, Zoe Wanamaker. She's the and now our story begins. Um, ah, oh, just so many great British actors in it, and it's just it adds to it for the fact that the voice acting is um, is on point as it is. And and I think like Halo, this was a huge release, wasn't it? Because Peter Muller knew the big bullshit that he is just just up upsold it incredibly. Like, oh, yeah. you plant a tree, it will eventually grow into a full blown thing over your. Well, it didn't quite pan out that way, but the way that your character like grew throughout the game, and you got scars that. If you got into a lot of battles and died, they'd become. Oh, yes, remember yeah, that. Yeah, you had like marks and things like that. Yep. On their body and, and you could be good or evil, obviously, then leading into things like Mass Effect and stuff like that. Uh, and yeah, just the general RPG ness of it, just building yourself up, getting your weapons, selling this, building that, buying this, fighting these, upgrading. Oh, it's fucking brilliant. I love the original. I'd never got, I never played the, was it called the Anniversary Edition, was it? Yeah, uh, I. I briefly jumped back in on that but yeah which is on game pass i don't know if you mentioned game pass yet this, we, this i episode, think but... i think we bri briefly like sort of went over the top of it but not yeah. really much yeah. no yeah like i said fable 2 was top but we'll get to that at some point um but yeah the original fable was fucking brilliant what a game oh what a good game. game good game good game as they say okay <laughs> anything else ross or uh no that's been that was my um that was my sort of three games for this year i mean that there, there was some other outstanding games that we could spend all night running through but those were the we got, three that we've got arcade games to get to so let's, let's move on exactly come on <laughs> uh well i'm gonna side with you with halo 2 um I, I, i'm not i'm gonna pick a slightly different one just to keep things fresh but I, one thing i wanted to say on that you remember when they did the e3 thing i think it was the year before it came out and they had that big campaign trailer it was like nine minutes long 
and they showed Chief going through the city of Mombasa and fighting all the the, the Covenant and getting in a wraith and all this sort of shit. And it was fucking awesome. I think I watched that trailer about a thousand times before it came out. <laughs> I was so excited. The music was awesome. It looked great. And then eventually it came out and it didn't quite have that sequence in it as it was shown in the in the trailer but oh i fucking love that tra- that that demo gameplay demo i still watch it now every now and then it'll pop up and i'm like oh, yeah i'll watch that it's fucking awesome anyway my choice other than ninja gaiden which Ian's already mentioned which was fucking incredible oh okay. and talk about it. let's talk I mean, about it i'm fucking dreadful at it i never beat it but i got pretty far in it and just a smooth combat and the way everything was just so i want to say easy it wasn't easy but it was easy it was to fun. pull off the moves, yeah. But it was really hard to to pull them off successfully, and it was just hectic action left, right, and centre. Just it was trying to learn combos and like yeah. Get, as soon as you got one or two combos, you just go, "I'm gonna keep using these combos over and over again." Basically, yeah. And then you get more moves and, and some magic powers and stuff, and and you end up sort of decently powerful. But then the enemies just ramp up and up and up. And I I, I forget the boss I got to, but it was one I got to, and fuck me, I could not beat that cunt to save my life. I could not get past him, and I, to this day, I don't think I've ever beat him. Um, but yeah, great game. However, my choice of game, slightly controversial perhaps, because it was pretty fucking violent. It was, is pretty, it was pretty fucking controversial. Manhunt. Ooh. From Rockstar Games. Ian, have you ever played mm. Manhunt? No. Oh, don't. <laughs> well, do. Or don't do, play it, yeah. watch it. That's why I gave my head. I've heard about loads of things about yeah. it. I've heard so, how bad it is, but I've never actually played it. It's so not at, this b- point in, at this point in my life, I was like an angsty teen. I was like, oh, and this game's going to be good because it's very violent. And fuck me, is it violent? That's um, an understatement. I, rem- I remember one point. Uh, oh, let me let me set the scene, sorry. So you play as, I forget his name. Is, is it Cash or something? Ca- uh, no, Cash is. Um, uh, is that in, in Manhunt 2? Yeah. No, you play as a James Arrow Cash. Yeah, and he, he basically is on death row, but instead of getting killed, he sort of gets knocked out and then wakes up in this snuff film, basically. Castle City. Order, Castle City, thank you. And in order to survive or to get out, he has to do what the director tells him. So he has to go through these scenarios and kill the people for the entertainment of the people watching the film. Um, and so you have to make do with whatever you can get your hands on, like plastic bags, baseball bats, weapons, knives guns fucking trash all sorts of shit um and if you manage to sneak up behind them and do like a proper full-on stealth kill it got, cuts to a little cutscene. and even for the time on the original xbox with the graphics as limited as they were yeah. jesus christ as i said i remember one time i called my mum in because i wanted to show her because i thought she'd find it funny <laughs> I, I snuck up behind a guy with a baseball bat and i did like whatever the maximum kill was um and he sort of kicked the back of his knees and he's down on his knees. Fucking swing and it just everything just splatters everywhere. And she was like, and you enjoy this? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I got him. Did you not see I got him, mum? She wasn't very proud of me that day. Um, but yeah, and it gets worse. Like when you, you put the bag over the head and you can see him suffocating and it's really grim to talk about. But at the time, I, I, it was kind of like I said, that, that angsty teenage like, yeah. I shouldn't be playing this, but I'm playing yeah. this. It was um, it was a brutal, and, brutal yeah. game. And then, like obviously, the iconic uh, boss character of Piggy, when he's chasing you around with the chainsaws and stuff in in the ha- the, the dilapidated house later on in the game. Uh, and it's just again the premise of it being a snuff film makes it even creepier because you know what you're doing is technically for someone else's pleasure, as it were. Yeah. So the 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 heart. The oh, right word. The more gruesome the kill, the better the result, as it were. And it's just, you know, you could run up and, and beat him up a bit, and then they go, "Well, you didn't kill him very well. Kill him again, like fucking rip him in half." And it's just, yeah, some of some of the deaths were were horrible. Um, and I don't know if you ever played the sequel. I know we, that's way in the future, but I couldn't actually finish that one because it was too much for me. It was just. Really? Oh. <laughs> It was horrible. I played it on the Wii, and it, just the add, addition of the motion controls, I, like, I can't, I can't do this. Because you do this. <laughs> it, it wasn't even that like one to one. It was just like you're just shaking this to make him put it down. That was I couldn't do. It. Yeah, the original it's one. Too I, real. I really, really. It, it makes me sound like a right fucking psycho, but I really, really enjoyed the first one, um, and I played it for a couple of times. It was a fucking brutal game, Mike. It was. It was brutal, and obviously there was a whole. Um, controversy when i think someone in the uk 
committed some murders or something, and they were, oh, he, he played Manhunt. That was it. That was it. It had so, to be that. Obviously yeah. not. It's it's gruesome, but like it's not. No, it's not that fucking. It's not a psychopath. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you've got yeah. I was gonna say you got to be a bit special, but but the whole other topic, which I don't really want to get into this week, no. especially this week after what happened in the states. Uh, yeah. We did talk about that. Anyway, we, next week we'll talk about 2005, and I think. I'm not sure, but I think there might be some decent games. That I feel that like 2005 there. might have quite a few obvious answers. One or two. Uh, and then, well, we'll get on from there.